This interview is part of the James J. Blanchard Living Library of Michigan Political History. Mayor Gribbs, Judge Gribbs, it is a great pleasure to have you here today for this interview for the Michigan Political History Society. Uh, you are identified very strongly with the city of Detroit, and yet I'm not sure that's where you were born and brought up, or is it? I was born in Detroit, were... but when I was about three years old, my parents bought a farm in the Thumb area, about 60 miles north of Detroit. Uh, about a mile from a little burg called Riley Center, and then was in the early 30s, but then they lost that farm in, in the Depression. I remember I was about five or six years old, went back to Detroit for a couple of years, and then Dad was rehired, uh, at Ford t took him back, rehired him, and then they bought a second farm. So I really grew up on the farm. So and the second farm was up near K-Pac? It was between K-Pac and Emmett, yes. Three miles from Emmett, seven miles, seven miles from K-Pac, and so I went to K-Pac High School, graduated from K-Pac High School. So did, were you a good student or were you? I was a good student. You yeah. were a good student. I was number two of the class, yeah. You were a salutatorian? Other, yes, correct, yeah. The, the young lady that was uh, uh, number one, she had all A's, and I didn't quite make that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a tough standard to match. Yeah. Okay, so you're through KPAC High School. What do you remember about life on the farm? Did it have any impact on your later life after you got back into uh, law school and went to Detroit? Did your memories of the farm have any bearing on what you thought about things or what you did later or not? Well, what you learn on a farm, particularly if you're a poor farmer, and my dad worked in the foundry in Detroit all the time that we lived on the farm. During the summers, we'd get a hired man to help us in the crops, but my brother and I, who was two years older, when we got into our early teens, we were able to do most of the work, milk the cows. Uh, we started with horses. Uh, and there's, you learn to make do, and you, you learn to organize, and you learn to, to um, repair machinery because you have to. And it, you have to be resourceful. You, that's the word, and so you learn that. Uh, and Were there I just had, the two children? Just the two. Yeah. I had two earlier brothers, but they died at younger, at uh, a young age, and uh, so my brother Joe and I were the two that remained, and he was two years older. One thing that's interesting, your name, Gribbs, now a lot of people wonder, you know, what kind of a name is that? And actually, I think you have a fascinating story, and that is, I think Gribbs is an anglicization or an Americanization it of is. a Polish name that is actually shorter. Well, right? it's G Five R letters versus six? What yes. is it? Yeah, G-R-Z-Y-B. Now, how do you pronounce that We used to Polish? pronounce it Grib, the, the Z being silent, G, like G-R-Y-B. And my brother uh, went into the seminary and he anglicized it to Gribbs, put in, we said oh, Grib, okay. and, and, we, and took that spelling and later on I did the same thing. So when you were growing up, was your name Gribbs then or yes. was it the Polish version? No, it was the version? Polish version. She it was the Polish version when you were at KPAC. Right, right. Wow. Yeah. Uh, did your parents come over from Poland or your grandparents or what? Both of my parents immigrated from Poland but separately. They didn't know each other. My dad uh, came here to Detroit uh, and joined his brother who was here in Detroit. My mother was brought over by my dad. He took a, my, I remember her saying it took a ship across, it took her a week wow. to get to, to the United States. And she was about 13, 14 years old. Dad was 16. He served, really, my dad worked uh, in, while well, in Poland. Poland was under the auspices of the Hungarian, um, Austrian-Hungarian Empire. Right. Franz Joseph was the emperor. And he learned to become a blacksmith. And it was in, in that service for about a year. He must have been 14 or 15, and they said, oh, go home for a while. We'll call you when you need, when we need you. Well, as buddies, people said, 
go someplace because there's going to be another war. This is about the 1914, 15. Right. So he came to the United States. When he came to Detroit, and my mother came to Detroit separately, they met here and married, uh, and uh, I'm the fortunate one to, the, uh, to be the beneficiary of their was, adventure. Was there a substantial Polish American community in the Detroit area oh, at very, that time? Very I mean, much so, yeah. yes. Yeah. As a matter of fact, we were at St. Hedwig Parish. It was all Polish, Polish Americans. A Holy Redeemer, all of that area, Michigan Junction area, that's huge Polish community. Polish food, sausages, groceries, and all that. Yeah. Wow. So you're out of KPAC High School, then what happens? World War II? What? Well, the war was winding down, and I wanted to, my brother by that time uh, had gone to the seminary, and I was the one that left to work the farm with my dad. And my dad and mom said, you know, stick with us. This is your farm, you know. And I said, I don't want to be, I decided I did not want to be a farmer. And I had really enrolled to go to the service, but because I was the sole bread earner that was keeping the, the, the farm going, so we, we had a tractor by then, a small one, but instead of farming, we, we had 100 acres, but we always shared crop with the neighbors, so we were farming about 200 acres. Which, uh, which allowed us to make some money and uh, allowed my parents to finally uh, pay off the mortgage and own the farm. But I decided to go into service and uh, I enlisted and uh, had to wait until the crops were in and by that time the war had ended. So I went, I went there for 18 months uh, and Where got all go? the veterans benefit. I went to Fort Dix. Uh, New I, Jersey? I was for basic training. Then I went to the military academy. I thought then I'd want to be a policeman. So I, I, uh, the military police commander came to Fort Dix and interviewed and selected a half a dozen. I was one of those to go to the military, uh, West Point, to the military academy. Wow. Now they have a regular post there and a, a police detachment that uh, controls the gates and the traffic, uh, football or otherwise. And we had really nothing literally to do with the cadets. They had their own squared in area but, but there were teachers living there and you know there was a cook corps an mp corps and and, and uh, ordinance corps and so forth running the post and uh, i uh, i became a buck sergeant during that year and a half came out and went to, went to the university of detroit yeah. so this is around what, like uh 1948 at this Correct. point or? yeah i started in 48. and so you started the university of detroit as an undergraduate Correct. Um, did you have in mind then you were going to continue on and go into law enforcement, or did you want to be a lawyer at that point? Well, what did you think? God bless my brother Joe. I didn't even want to go to college. You know, it was after the war, lots of money. You know, you could get jobs and make make good money. But my Joe insisted. Look, you got the GI Bill. You don't have to worry about it. It'll, it'll pay for three years. Try it. Well, I decided to try it, and I did well academically. And uh, it gave me the confidence, so I decided I'd go into, initially I thought merchandising or marketing, because I was a salesman for People's Outfitting Company, a retail outfit in downtown Detroit, in a part-time basis. Uh, then I found out, no, I think I'll do something more substantial. Went into accounting, but that was too quiet. I wanted to go to the people area, and uh, medicine didn't appeal to me, so I considered law. And at that time, we were able to, uh, if I did well academically, I, I the first three years, I got all, all my basic courses in. And uh, my first year in law school would be my fourth year for the undergrad. So I got two degrees in six years instead of seven. They, I got you. They, they gave me that, that fourth year, first year in law school is the fourth year. So I, was, I have, a, have a BS, Bachelor of Science in Accounting and Economics, and then law school. Wow. So it's like... 1954 at this point, exactly. and you're out of law school, and you've got these degrees, so then what happens? Then I wanted trial work, and I, uh, I, uh, uh, one of the teachers was uh, the, at the UD was Joe Rashid, who was chief trial attorney for the prosecutor's office. He taught criminal law, and uh, he said, why don't you uh, come in to join the prosecutor's office and get some experience, and I did that. So I liked it so much and I was given so many challenges that I ultimately stayed almost eight years. I wanted to stay two or three years, but then they'd promote me and give me big conspiracy cases and the, <laughs> the challenges and it really was a good life. I learned a lot. I mean, that's the way to learn law every so day in court.